Hi everybody, it's Lawrence Maas here, registered osteopath and homeopath, talking to you live from Barbados. And in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you all about the first law, the law about carbohydrate control, so that you can keep the yeast and fungi at bay and look after your pancreas for your entire life, so that you don't get a belly, or have, if you do have an extra belly, if you follow these simple guidelines about carbohydrates, it will reduce your belly easily while feeling satisfied. The key here is choosing carbs with a low glycemic index. Atkins diet, South Beach diet, and the Jenny Craig Nutrisystem all have their own versions of the low glycemic index system, but where my lifestyle diet system changes everything is that it also tells you about what proteins and fats as well as minerals you should be consuming for your individual body. Those other diet systems don't take that specific you know, proteins or fats, minerals into considerations. So you can only go so far in terms of health perfection. So for example, Atkins and South Beach uh, will not describe which proteins is better for your body's metabolism. In hindsight, Atkins really was only suited for the O bloods with its heavy emphasis on meat. And an A blood would suffer because they would need more vegetable based protein sources anyway. So more on this actually in the second law and that's next week's lesson. So everybody is unique and with my mass method and the five laws of perfect health you will be able to achieve the health and body of your dreams and turn around disease for good. Now you've decided to come with us on this journey to improved health, congratulations. The first and most important step is the law of going antifungal and choosing good carbs. And in an age when diabetes and other ailments are so rampant, choosing good carbs and going antifungal are a wise path to follow if you do not want to add to the growing number of people and an increasing number of children who are affected with diabetes and other degenerative diseases. Now a key point to remember is that low carbohydrate control through low GI foods choices will help you lose weight and stabilize your blood sugar. So how do you control your carbohydrate and become antifungal? Well this is actually a seven step process which will help you very naturally. The first is choose low glycemic index foods. Not all carbohydrates are created equal. Some carbs have a little glucose in them and some have a lot. The higher the glycemic index carbohydrates, which are fast carbs, are linked to chronic degenerative diseases. Now lower GI, slow carbs are linked to longevity. According to Professor Constantini from the World Health Organization, fungi exploit humans by feeding off the sugars that humans consume. And today in our modern society, many popular foods and snacks are laced with ever increasing amounts of sugar or high fructose corn syrup which are fast carbs and these will cause weight gain in an individual that does not exercise regularly. So for example instead of having sugar with your tea or coffee I advise my patients to replace it with xylitol or erythritol which are natural sugar alcohols used as sugar substitutes. They have a low glycemic index and are used successfully with diabetics, cholesterol patients and patients who are concerned with weight loss or simply the health conscious. The American Heart Association released a public statement on August the 24th, 2009 that Americans must reduce dramatically the amount of sugar consumed on a daily basis. And they recommend that women should only consume 6 teaspoons of sugar per day, 25 grams, and that men should only consume 9 teaspoons of sugar per day, which is 37 grams. Most diets will either suggest cutting out sugar or at least reducing it. And I find that this advice is a poor substitute for a modern addicted sugary lifestyle. Remember sugar is a drug that gets people hooked into a sugar addiction lifestyle. Our processed foods that we eat are often laden with sugar or high fructose corn syrup. And of course it eventually hurts our bodies and I believe not simply reduce but remove sugars and products with any sugars altogether. Now, Another unsuspecting culprit is bread. Bread is actually one of those yeasty food items that we eat all the time. It has a high glycemic index, meaning it has a high sugar content, which taxes the pancreas enormously. And as it has to produce a rapid insulin response, and it, of course with that insulin response, the body's way of controlling the sudden shift in blood sugar levels as a result of bread's consumption. So bread causes obesity and is clinically correlated to atherosclerosis. So if someone habitually eats junk food like wheat, sugar, flour, processed meat, artificial milkshake ingredients, he or she causes huge swings in the insulin. And as a result, the pancreas will get tired. And if the junk food has yeast in it, or if that person is taking a course of antibiotics, then trouble will really brew, literally. 
So what happens if one eats too much sugar too regularly? Well, the sensitivity of the fat cells that are, store, that are storing the sugar as fat will get progressively numb and number. They become less sensitive to the calling of the insulin and they therefore let the sugars remain in the bloodstream. This then sets up a domino effect that then causes the pancreas to secrete even more insulin called hyperinsulinemia. As the blood levels of sugar remain high over time, the fat cells lose their ability to respond to the insulin signal and the pancreas has to work harder to meet the demands of the sugar regulation. The fat cells reception becomes more insensitive and the islet cells of the pancreas will start to die. And this is the start of insulin resistance and eventually to type 2 diabetes. So you've got the first two steps covered. The third step in the process is to stop the diabetic domino effect. The diabetic domino effect, and imagine it goes do, 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 do. so the diabetic domino effect has seven stages. Hyperglycemia, high, high sugars, inflammation from the high sugars, lower oxygen, thicker blood, leads to higher blood pressure, weight gain, obesity, and then eventually further death of the pancreatic tissues of the islet cells of Langerhans. And eventually this could lead on to a type 1 diabetic state, an insulin dependent condition. Now this condition requires vigilant insulin management with a good diet and exercise program. The fourth step is to heal your pancreas with specific natural substances such as foods, good fats and vitamins, such as regular fish oils, chromium and cinnamon and fresh low GI vegetables. By reducing the glucose load in the body at each meal using a low GI diet system, one can reduce the amount of insulin secreted and allow the pancreas to recover. This also in turn allows for weight loss and the reduction in blood pressure. You can fix your pancreas naturally by making the following habits. Start a gentle exercise routine with your personal trainer. Research has shown that exercise is an excellent at improving insulin sensitivity. Patients can double their insulin efficiency within six months. Imagine that. Anyway, start eating a low GI index diet. Eat proteins regularly based on blood type. Next week's lesson. Eat good fats and fish like fish oils and flax and olive oil. Eating a diet full of antioxidants found in vegetables. Increasing your fiber will help regulate the flow of carbs into the blood. Number seven is eat garlic, cinnamon, turmeric, cumin regularly. Number eight is have regular meals on time. Very important this one and have protein snacks in between the meals. Also number nine is reduce your stress levels through meditation, yoga, prayer, silent contemplation, connect to God. And number 10 is use positive visualization. This helps to reduce anxiety by guiding your mind to create positive outcomes for the future instead of negative thoughts about the future. The fifth step is exercise. So important. A certified personal trainer can create a fitness program designed to improve muscularity and a reduction in body fat. Exercise is key to improving glucose management and the key issue here is to enjoy the exercise that you like. I have patients who do yoga to help their diabetes and other patients choose running, walking or even bodybuilding. Regularity is key. The sixth step is bust your stress levels and get your levels of cortisol down with meditation, yoga, tai chi, on the med therapy. And if you can lower your stress and you can relax, your body can start to heal. It only heals when you start to relax. The seventh step is track your glucose response by measuring your HbA1c levels regularly. And as you get better sugar control, the yeast will diminish because it feeds off sugar. So if you're controlling your sugars, the yeast levels will die. And then it shrinks in population. And then of course, you will lose belly fat as well. Now you can feel good to be empowered with the knowledge that through good food choices, low GI foods, discipline with exercise, correct supplements and a positive outlook that you can reverse type 2 diabetic diagnosis or overweight issues or hypertensive issues. And if you want to know more about this lesson in detail, then you can download, order my second book, Curing Diabetes in 7 Steps, in the next few months through Amazon or our website. So look out for our updates. So reach out and grab the health you need to feel to believe.